that you could be here tonight. Welcome. Tonight I'm talking about energy testing or biomeridian testing. So a lot of you have already gotten this test and so some of these things that I'm going to talk about you'll be familiar with but at the end we can, you, if you have questions you can ask questions. So welcome everybody. So I wanted to start out by saying that energy testing is an, a, pretty, a pretty amazing tool to, that we use here because not only is it diagnostic, we can find out things that have been going on in your body for a long time, even before something can be seen in conventional testing, you know, blood work, MRIs, PET scans, and that type of thing. So what I do is the first time that somebody comes to my office, I explain the meridian testing is, it's kind of like you've heard of chi, right? It's these meridian pathways that go through our body, and it's the fastest transmission of information in our bodies. So they've done studies in Japan where they actually injected radioactive isotopes into these meridians and they saw this energy, this light go through the speed of light. And they injected those same radioactive isotopes into veins and they saw the light but it wasn't as quick. So we do know through scientific evidence that we do have meridians in our body. And that's how I get information when somebody comes and tests with me. So the first thing that we do is we do the test and I see where you're in balance and where you're out of balance and you get a printed report. Now the second report that you get, I'm going to go over it a little bit because it's a little bit complicated but I've handed out one for each of you to understand this. But I just want you to understand how our body works and how our body works in layers. So in homeopathy, we believe that, and it's true, that our body heals in layers. So if you come to me and you have something wrong, your body's gonna prioritize what it needs to heal first. And then if you come back a few months later, it might be something else. But what we're trying to do is find the bottom line. What is going on and what's causing all of your, you know, your health issues? Whether it's toxic, toxicity, you might have fungus, you might have heavy metals, you might have parasites, whatever that may be, radiation, or maybe you just need system support, okay? Or it could be emotional. Emotions and stress are a really big thing. So let's say somebody comes in. So this is one of our patients that we have here that he was, I won't give you his name, but he said that I could use his report. The first time that he came, this is called a homotoxicology chart. And this is all the systems in our body. So we have the skin, nervous, locomotor, respiratory, cardiovascular, you know, digestive. It goes clear down to the immune system. So it goes to every one of the systems. And so what this is telling me is this person is pretty toxic. So this is the first time he did a test. This was his first test. This is the number one test. This was his second test, and this was his third test. So he came in, and this is what it said. So what it told me is that there are six phases. Phase one, and this is on your paperwork. So phase one means that a toxin gets in your body. Phase two is after this toxin's in your body, it tries to get out. The toxin, when we get a toxin in our body, it could be pollution, it could be a food additive, it could be so many things, a fungus, parasite, bacteria. It wants to get out of the body. And so we have certain symptoms. Like for me, if I get a toxin in my body, I get hives. Like I know that I've done something or something's in my body that is poisonous because I get hives instantly. Some people get headaches, some people get sinus, you know, sinus issues, stuffy nose, whatever, and some people get joint aches. But whatever your symptom is, that's the toxin trying to get out. Well, it's uncomfortable. And then a lot of times we'll go to the store and we'll try to get something to suppress that symptom, right? So when that symptom, when that toxin can't get out of the body, we go into phase three. It goes into phase three, which it will find a home in the body. So it's like, well, I can't get out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be here for a while. Between phase three and phase four, that's called the impregnation phase because it's been there long enough to where not only is it finding a home in the body, now it's gonna get into your cells. That's why it's called the impregnation phase because it's a little more serious. Now it's in your cells. So between phase four and phase five, after it's been in the cells for a while, those cells with the toxin start duplicating, replicating with the toxin in it. So even if you're not introducing new toxins into your body, the cells are duplicating that toxic cell. And then phase six is more duplication, cell death and degeneration. So we don't want that. We need to clean that up. So we don't want any red, yellows, or greens. And this is what I do when I do the testing. This is one of the reports that I give the patient so that they can kind of see where their body is. So I gave him some things. He had some heavy metals and, you know, this different thing. So the second time he came in, six weeks later, 
this is what his body looked like. So I gave him some cleansers, some detoxifiers, some homeopathics, and I think I gave him an herbal tea. But this is what happened, like, I think it was six weeks later. And then two months later, after, then we went down to the next layer. He had some parasites. So we got rid of the parasites plus the other layer. And then the third time that he came, this is what he looks like. So he's pretty happy because the thing, the cool thing about this is it gives you a visual of what's going on in your body. And some people take a lot of supplements or, you know, they do cleanses and they do different things that we tell them to do. And they're like, well, is this even doing me any good? But this is a good visual, like, yes, it's doing me good. So that's the first part of the test. The second part of the test is what we call the bioimmune survey. And what that is, is, let me just explain that to you. So there's a theory that cancer is a 12 year disease. Tumor formation is in year eight. So if cancer is a 12 year disease, tumor formation is in year eight. A lot goes on in our body before that tumor is formed. So if you think about it, they've done research in Japan that it takes one billion cancer cells to form a tumor that's the size of um, one gram, which is like the size of a marble. So that's when conventional medicine can detect this tumor. But look at how many years that this has been going on in your body, progressing before conventional medicine can detect it, okay? So what we have to remember is the um, tum cancer the tumor is a symptom of cancer the disease. So this is the disease going on. The tumor is a symptom of this. And that's why a lot of people will get rid of their tumor, get, you know, whether it's a lumpectomy or they, you know, get, you know, they get conventional medicine and get it out. And then it will manifest in other ways. It will manifest, it will either come back or it manifests in other ways because they didn't take care of the disease. They just took care of the tumor. Do you understand that? So that's what we're learning, you know, with this system and with the testing that we do. So we know that everything starts in a, with an emotional event. It starts at an energetic level. So every cell start, starts at an energetic or emotional level. That information travels to the meridian level, then to the nervous system, then to the cellular level. The cellular level is where all conventional testing is done, like MRIs, PET scans, blood work. You know, anything when you go to a doctor in conventional medicine and they do certain tests, that's what they're testing for to see if they can see something. So that's why right here, after the tumor's formed, they can diagnose the cancer because they can see it. But they don't even understand this and they ignore this. But the meridian testing that we do, the energetic level, is we can see something on such a more subtle level and we can see changes every day. So instead of being restricted to what conventional medicine can see right here, we can see what goes on in the energetic emotional level, we can see what goes on in this, the nervous system and also the cellular level which allows us to see what goes on in this area. So instead of being restricted to this, as we were talking about, we can see what goes on in this whole area. And look at all this time that we can catch before something is there. And believe me, it's a lot easier to get rid of something in this area than it is once it gets to that area, much easier. So we all have about 75 million cancer cells, every one of us. But our immune, immune, our immune system is strong and it keeps that into check unless your immune system is weak or it's suppressed. So that's always why it's important, prevention and early detection. But as long as our immune system is strong, it keeps those into check. But what, what um, suppresses our immune system? Stress, emotions, um, toxins, parasites, bacteria, anything that's not good in our body. It could be fungus, it could be you know viruses, whatever doesn't belong in our body or emotions, which you know we need to you know think about stress, suppresses our immune system. And what happens is that gives our abnormal cells the ability to over to be overgrown and be uncontrolled, and then that's when we can enter into this cascade. And what happens is cancer cells, we all have these cancer cells that you know can keep into check with our immune system, but what happens is the cancer cell only needs two to two weeks to two months to start getting through our body if our immune system is weak. So it gets to our connective tissues, our blood, our muscles, all of our tissues. And what happens is it can spread throughout our whole body. And of course our immune system is fighting that, but you know what our cancer cells do? They're really smart. What they can do is during that two week period to two month period, they start coating themselves in fibrogen and phlegm because that's from our body. And if it coats it 15 times, it's invisible to the immune system. That is one of the things that the cancer cells do to hide from our immune system. 
So all our cancer cells need to do this is time. And what gives it time is if we don't take care of ourselves, if we're not eating correctly, if we're not doing the things that we should do to keep our immune system strong. Does that make sense? So just knowing that, you kind of want to take care of yourself. You want to get your mind right, your emotions right. Take care of yourself, exercise. And that's why when you come to the center and Dr. Keneally and the rest of you know the physicians and practitioners tell you to do these things, it's because we see this over and over again. And just with the testing that I do, I see if somebody comes in here and has these toxins or has these issues, if we give them certain things or have them do certain things, whether it's emotional work, whether it's you know get rid of the toxins, get have cleanses, um, it really helps them and we can see them getting better and better. So um, when you come in to test that's done, what happens is you hold a bar and it's the ground, the negative. I introduce a current and with that current we create a circuit that I'm able to get information from your body because the machine I use, it's called an ohm meter, O-H-M. It has an um, antenna and a signal generator in it. So anything that we're testing is in that circuit and I'm able to get information from your body and then the software I use has about 60,000 items in the database that have been imprinted. So I don't ever know what's going on in your body. All I can do is I test you and your body chooses what it needs. Because how could I possibly go through 60,000 items and know what your body needs? But it's pretty accurate and we, you know, we help a lot of people. So that's basically the cancer cascade or the bioimmune survey. That's what we do and that's how I do my testing. Now, does anybody have any questions? And this is open to everybody out there in the audience, if anyone has any questions. Yes. I always want to understand, and this is why, why, why you go with the fingers and the toes? Why you can't just, what, when you do your test? Oh, the reason, okay, so Kitty's asking why when we do the test, why do we do the fingers and the toes? The reason is because there's different meridian pathways on different parts of our, parts of our body. So you can think of it as electrical acupuncture, so our toes, are our organs. They're, they're directly related to the organs. So all of the meridian pathways are directly related to different organs and tissues of our body. For instance, the toes are the liver, the pancreas, the kidneys, the stomach. So that's what our toes are for. And that's why it's really important because I can do a test for somebody and their hands, when I test their hands, they're perfect. And I'm like, wow, you have a really good scan and they're really happy. Then I get to their toes and I'm like, okay, you need a cleanse. Your kidney is, you know, is weak. Your liver is weak. Your pancreas, your spleen. And when I do like, let's say I'm testing for their pancreas or spleen and it's really weak, I know they have a blood sugar issue. So I can just test a person and depending on what organ or tissue is weak, I kind of kind of know what's going on. For instance, if somebody's, their stomach's weak, their intestines are weak and their blood, I know they probably have candida or a fungus because I can tell by testing what that, whatever it's a disease or a toxin, what it attacks. And I can tell by looking at that. Yes, Alan. Um, during the session, so I, I by chance, have had the same thing. Right. And my results, my results were different. This showed worse, a little better, bad. Yes. And my results were worse, much better, and bad. Then, right. And and you were explaining about how um, that can happen. Yes. But that's just so baffling me. Well, because. Remember how, oh, so what she's asking, I don't know if the audience heard, but what she's asking is what happens when she's done this test three times. She did. First time it was very bad. It was very bad, and, and then it got better, better, and then it got worse. Yes. So with her, so everything's about compliance, but she's a very compliant patient, and sometimes I can only tell you what to do or ask you or recommend. I can't control what you do when you walk out, but in her case, what happens is, remember when I explained to you that we heal in layers? So let's say the first time that somebody comes in, let's say that they have three things wrong with them. And then the second time, maybe a couple of things. Sometimes that third layer that we're trying to get down has a lot more issues, and that's what happened with her. So probably the next time, and I've seen this quite often, and probably the next time she does it, and that might have been the most significant layer. And the next time she comes in, we just had to clean her out to get to that layer. She'll probably have a much cleaner scan. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. so that's it's what happens. It's hard to visualize because you always think you go from, from bad to best, just like this one, but it really didn't work. Right, well, and that's why people don't understand. The, the, the way that we heal is from the top to the bottom, the inside out, and the most recent thing to the furthest thing back. So let's say that something happened 10 years ago or 12 years ago. I've, I've scanned people and have found DDT in their system, and they grew up on a farm. Okay. 
40 years ago. So it's like, those toxins are in your body till you get them out. Even if we decide to, oh, I'm gonna eat clean and I'm gonna eat organic and I'm gonna do all these things, I'm good, which is great that you do that. But those toxins that you had in your body from 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago are very likely still in your body, whether it's heavy metals, it could be parasites, it could be. Well, I'm now doing a heavy duty parasite cleanse. Right. So um, it'll be really interesting to see. Oh, right. We'll because see, and might, I'm, I'm interested in your next test to see what it looks like, right. but that's right. why. So, does anyone else have any questions? Yes? Is this only for prevention, or is this helpful if you already have a cancer diagnosis? Well, Dr. Keneally actually sends every one of her patients to me. And so, as you know, this is a cancer center, and she does everything from colds to cancer. So, it's preventative, and also with the Naturas, of which I didn't get into that. So, I'm glad you asked that question. So, part of the, the um, bioimmune survey to, like, if somebody has cancer, is we have these herbs, they're Chinese herbs, they're eight system specific anti-carcinogenic herbs. They're from China and I've been to China three times and spent time with this doctor. Dr. Wang, he comes from a line of 1200 years of physicians. So for 1200 years, his family's been using these eight system specific anti-carcinogenic formulas. They refer to them as um, herbal chemo and they're very effective and that's what I test the patients on. So let's say you come in and she doesn't know if you have cancer or maybe she knows you do. But the reason I'm testing you on these is because I can test what system or organ responds to these. Where does your body need these? And then how many does your body need? And by that, she's able to tell kind of where the cancer is, if she didn't know already, where the cancer is, and how progressed it is. And so that's how we do that. So it's good for no matter how advanced you are, or even if people just come in, they feel great, they just wanna know, am I okay? Because remember that most chronic diseases don't have any symptoms until it's way late. So people wanna come in when they feel great because it's like, is something going on in my body? And remember we talked about this period where there's really no symptoms and there's no way, if you're even going to a conventional doctor for their, to them to identify it. And even in your blood work, if you look at, we're testing on a meridian level. This is years before it gets to the cellular, <laughs> cellular level where the blood work is taken. And many times what we do does support what the blood is and everything else, but this is just the beginning. Yes, Debbie? How, how often do you guys yield to be coming to see you for just a skin test? So this specific test is, it just depends on your condition. So let's say if somebody is kind of out of this, this like let's say they had cancer and they're out, they're getting out eventually, you know, like gradually. I would say every six months, but really it's good to do it every four months because it takes 120 days for our white blood cells to regenerate. And that is how long it takes for me to do the test for this part of the test to really find out are those, we call them naturas, they're the Chinese herbs, are they working? And how much do you need? Because if you do it too soon, they haven't had a chance to do their work. But I would say a good number would be every four months. Not forever, but you know, until we get out of this. You know, you might start with 19 capsules and then we go out, out, out until you're like to zero. Yeah. Okay, so if you're on some medication that you're not supposed to be, you know, you're supposed to be taking on an empty stomach, is there a problem with taking some of that with other medicines, your Naturas or your, you know, all these other pills that you usually prescribe? How does that work when you're taking that? No, just for, what is that question again? I, like if you're taking other medications, Yes. We're supposed to be on an empty stomach at the same time. How do you break it down as far as when you're supposed to take that particular medicine with the group that you're giving plus other medications that are on empty stomachs? Okay. She's asking how you know, just if I can get this right, it's a little confusing question. I mean, for me, about medication, this is a confusing question for a lot of patients. And you almost have to talk to your doctor, but what she's asking is if you're on a lot of medicines, that you have to take on an empty stomach and you have all these different medicines that you have to take and then you're taking herbs and you're taking all these things together and some are on the empty stomach mm -hmm. and some aren't. How do you manage that? Is that what you're asking? Can you mix these with other empty stomach ones or do you separate it out between those? So there's supplements that they're already on. Yes, there's supplements you're already on. And then you, they yes, test there's, with you and they have other supplements. Yes, you can take them with other supplements even if it says take them on an empty stomach if there's other supplements, you can take those on an empty stomach. The only supplements that I give that you have to isolate are the homeopathics. 
So you have to isolate those. So the homeopathics have to be taken at least 15 minutes away from food, water, brushing your teeth, anything. You can take the homeopathics together, okay. all the homeopathics, the drops, the drops okay. but you can't take them with anything else. So that would be the only thing that <clears throat> I give personally that you can't take with anything else, but you can take them together. Does that answer your question? Because, yes, yes that's, so all of these natures that you get and all of the protocols that you get, however they tell you to take them, you can take them with other things, as long as you're taking correctly, whether it's with the meal or on an empty stomach, with other things, but not the homeopathics. The tea I give, the herbal tea I give, you have to take on the empty stomach, but you, I don't think you've had any of that. But you have to take that on it. You, you can even drink it right before you take anything else, but it's an empty stomach and it's more effective because it gets into your circulation. When it comes to blood work, Molly, versus your test, and how the doctor puts the two and two together, can you talk about how much do they collate or do, how much are they similar or are they two different stories that come um, together? The way that I would say is sometimes they do coordinate and they support each other, but it's like everything we do here, the blood work, this, it's like pieces of a puzzle. So it's really important to get your blood work done. It's important to get this, and then there's a few other things because the doctors or the practitioners, especially Dr. Keneally, Dr. Shan, and Dr. Virginia, they put all of those together like a piece of, you know, pieces of a puzzle. I might test for something that is in none of the blood that Dr. Keneally has received on a patient, nothing. That's why she wants me to do the test because she's like, okay, I think I need to have this person go get a scan or a thermography or whatever because, and then sometimes I'll do a test on somebody and something will come up in the bones or the connective tissues or the blood and it's in nothing else. And so it concerns her, so she has them go doing tests that, that will, like maybe a you know, MRI or whatever that she needs to do to identify that and sometimes it doesn't even come up for six months or a year. And then maybe a year later, all of a sudden it's in their bones. Because you have to remember that the meridian testing, we're getting things clear from here, okay? Such a subtle level. There's years and years of progression, progression, progression until it's identified. So realize that something might be cooking in your body. And if it's not, just like if somebody has diabetes, just because somebody's eating sugar all day doesn't mean they have diabetes, but they're on that path. And if they get a blood test and it's like your you know, hemoglobin A1C is high, you know, it's like, Everything is right for diabetes, and if you don't stop right now, you might get diabetes. You know, you need to, you know, start eating healthy, you know, cut out the sugar, start exercising, and then they could possibly, you know, reverse that, which is, you know, 99%, 100% if they do that. But it's the same thing with this. Like, they could be on a path to be getting cancer, and I could find something, and then I'm saying, okay, you need to do this cleanse, you need to take this, you need to get this toxin out of your body, you know, all these things. It could reverse to where that never shows up. But if they don't do what I'm telling them to do, or we're trying to give them to tell them to do, they'll go further down that path and they'll get cancer. And we see that a lot. We see the people, like I can test somebody and see something kind of cooking, and the people that are compliant, you can see it kind of like it really never came to fruition, you know, it never came. But I can do the same test on somebody and I can say, okay, this is what's going on with your body. You need to do this and this and this. And if they don't, they're kind of not compliant and kind of don't believe that you know anything's going on because they feel good. Boom, a year later or two years later, they have cancer. And I've seen that many times. And the emotional thing is a huge, huge thing, which that's a whole nother talk. That's a whole nother talk. But what I do find is the patients that I have that get well the quickest are the people that are happy, that are positive, that are loving, that have forgiven people, that you know believe in you know themselves and that they're going to be healthy and then the people that are a little bit grouchy and a little bit mean and negative i don't see them getting better very fast so we can give you all of the supplements in the world we can do all of these treatments but if you're not right up here then that's not going to really work and that's why where you are in your head your mind your emotions and how you think is the biggest part of all of this, and I see it over and over again, over and over again. And that's a whole nother talk. <laughs> so tell us about some of the length of time, like let's say somebody comes in and you detect something. 
How long does it take them to work with Dr. Kamini or the, Dr. Von Schaefer or Dr. Gita and they're working on a regime? How long does it usually take from beginning to end on some of the severe cases versus the non-severe cases? Um, and what are those cases? Okay, like again, the, again, it's like um, back to what I was saying about how compliant is somebody and where's their frame of mind. So if somebody, I've seen somebody come in with stage four cancer and they come in and they look at it as, you know what, this is an opportunity for me to change my life. They don't even look at it as cancer. They're just like, whoa, this is a blessing. And these are the people that get better the fastest. They'll be like, this is a blessing. This is a message for me. I need to change my life. This is a challenge, but there's something that's gonna, good gonna come out of this. Those people, they do everything Dr. Keneally tells them to, everything all of us practitioners tell them to do. They love their family. They get a lot of family support. They do everything possible in a loving way. I see them getting better very quickly. Now, the opposite. I can have somebody come in here that we really can't figure out what's even wrong with them, but they're sick. They don't feel good. They're always sick. They never feel good, no matter what we do. Do they really follow it? I don't know, but they're always complaining. They're kind of mad at everybody, and I never see them getting sick. So that kind of goes back to where you are in your head. But I've seen a lot of people that come in here very sick, that doctors have even told them, you know, but we can't do anything for you. Like, you're done. Like, we're, we're done. And a year later, and Dr. Keneally says it takes about a year. A year. You come in here, you need to give me a year of your time, and you're going to be okay. And I believe that to be true because I've seen that. I've seen it many times where people walk out of here so thankful, like, they didn't even know they were going to have a life. And now they're like, have their family, and everything's fine. And I see that a lot. So besides cancer, can you detect Lyme disease, diabetes, yes. osteo osteoporosis, well, yeah, so, inflammation? Oh yeah, so um, when they come, so this, this other right here, this is a lot inflammation. The red, a lot, you know, um, inflammation is kind of the basis of chronic diseases, right? And so a lot of people do have a lot of inflammation, but if somebody comes in, there's a lot of people that have candida and they don't realize how debilitating that is. So a lot of people have candida, we can you know, detect candida. If somebody has parasites, we can find the parasites. If somebody has Lyme disease, we can you know, find that they have Lyme disease. I don't really know a condition that has come into this center that we have not been able to identify. You know, And the toxins in their body that they're surprised that we can identify because I'll be doing a test for somebody and I'll be like, Oh, you know, um, just the other day when we were doing the um, that filming, I we had a patient that came in and we just I just did a five minute um, example of a test that I do, and she happened to have been on a movie set, and I was just testing her for the camera, and I'm like, oh, okay, just a minute, you have you've been drinking, um, you have plastic in you, you I don't know where you're getting it, but you have plastic, it's a toxin, we need to get it out, and she said, oh my gosh, I've been drinking bottled water. From my car and it gets so hot for the last six weeks because she was on you know doing her work and so that came up that fast she would have never known that and she says I've been getting headaches and even before I told her that I said so this will cause headaches and it will cause probably migraines and sinus issues and some rashes and that's exactly what she's been getting so somebody can come into me and I can not only tell them what toxins are in their body I'll tell them the symptoms that they're having and they'll be like how do you know that but that's what the energy testing has done, and that is what their body's telling me. I just know how to read it. I know how to read what their body's trying to tell me so that I can help them. Did you have a question? Yeah, so if you have a lot of red zones, yes. um, how, and it's pretty extreme, do I visually or how quick you're very compliant and you're working on your attitude can you expect to I've seen in the last two weeks, I've seen three patients that were all red. Like, everything was red, everything was yellow, everything was green. And within two months, all the red was gone and partial yellow and some of the green. I mean, two months. And I would say in the last two weeks, I've had three patients that have had that because they were scared. When they saw the report, they were really scared and they thought, oh my gosh, I don't want them to be scared, but I just want them to see where they are. But I'll tell them exactly what to do to fix that. And these three patients were scared enough that they did exactly what I told them to do. And within two months, it was at least half of it was gone. That's how fast. Wow. Yeah. Okay, one, one more question. Oh, no, you're fine, Dave. All right, the stomach, if you have, know you have a problem with your stomach, 
and your um, gallbladder, are there certain things that you recommend? Oh, definitely. Yeah, there is. Oh, she wants to know if there's something wrong with, and you know there's something wrong with your stomach and gallbladder, is there anything that we can do to help her, basically, is what you're saying, right? Yes. If somebody comes into me, I mean, I usually do an overall body test just to find out because I do it for a practitioner to say, okay, this is everything, that's, this is a snapshot view of their whole system. This is what's going on. These are the toxins in their body. These are the protocols. This is what my recommendation is. Then I hand it off to, you know, someone else. So um, if Betty just came into me and said, okay, I just want you to focus on my stomach and gallbladder. Yes, definitely, I could do something to help that. But that time given, usually when somebody's scheduled for a test, is for me to do everything. And I could be testing somebody for three or four hours if I really had a list of everything that they wanted me to test them for. But I do an overall test just to find the most important things to get the doctors enough information to do what they need to do with that. To, that's the piece of puzzle that they're waiting for. That's me, and that's why I give them what they need. Does that answer your question? We certainly do. Okay. Molly, tell us about your education. Some were asking just about your qualifications and what brought you to this journey. Okay. Um, what started me here is I, well, let me back up a little bit. I grew up on a ranch, so we lived off the land. And everything, I didn't even know what organic meant. I just know that you picked your own food out of the ground and you hunted. <laughs> Not that I would hunt now, but I'm just saying that's how we lived. We canned all of our own food. Everything was from scratch. Um, we didn't go to the store, you know, often. We didn't go out to restaurants. So I always thought healthy eating was great. But when I, so I was always into health, and I didn't know when I go to the store and I see these people, you know, loading up their carts with boxed and canned foods. I'm like, what do they do with that? Like, I don't even know what you would do with that because you make everything from scratch, right? So, and I still do, but um, about. 12 years ago, I was really sick and no doctor could figure out what was wrong with me and I couldn't breathe and there were just so many things that were happening with my body and one day I woke up and I had a huge bump on my neck. It was the size of an egg. I mean that fast overnight and it scared me to death and so I'm like, oh, it's my thyroid. So I went to the doctor and it was advanced. It was so advanced that it had affected my heart. So they put me in Huntsman Cancer Institute in Salt Lake City. And I went, and I was, the only thing I could think about was, oh my gosh, what are my kids gonna do? Because I just thought I was gonna die. And I didn't know anything about um, holistic medicine or integrative medicine. All I knew is conventional. So they did some tests on me. They put me in um, Huntsman Cancer Institute. I did nuclear treatments. I had to be isolated from my family. I was in quarantine. And I was going through these treatments, and I remember it was Mother's Day, and I was walking by myself because you know, I was in quarantine for eight days, and I thought, this is a horrible life, you know, there's gotta be more, and there's gotta be something, like we're not put on this earth to suffer like this. And so I really started searching for more of a holistic way to heal. And so I found a doctor that was holistic, and he helped me. And I got out of that, and I got beyond that, and ever since then, that was probably 12 years ago, I just started studying and going to school, so I, I went back to UCI, I, um, majored in psychology and nutrition and then I started taking classes and classes on different mod um, modalities of holistic training. Um, I do a 3D body scan. I worked with a doctor cardiologist testing his patients on cardiovascular diabetes and like um, PTSD. I tried to find everything I could about how to help heal a body naturally. And then as far as this testing goes, I've known about this for about 30 years, but a doctor in Utah did it, so I was sending a lot of my clients and patients to him. And so finally, about eight years ago, I bought one of these, and then I found this center. But in the meantime, I've traveled all over the world, training with doctors that specialize in holistic healing. Like I've been to China three times and trained with Dr. Wong, which has, he's, he um, graduated from Western Medical School when he was 17 years old, and he's the one that's been doing the Naturas for 1,200 years, and so I've trained with him. I trained with a doctor, the last living student, and um, he's a professor and a student of Dr. Vole that came up with this technology, the biomarine testing, and so I trained with him in the Caribbean. Well, I did a two-year program with him and trained with him and got my doctorate in natural medicine from that school, 
So I'm constantly going to, to different places to try to learn more and more. And in October, I'm going to London to train with um, Prince Charles naturopath. So what I look for, even if I don't get a certificate at every training, I really seek out the people in the world that have had the most experience and success of healing people naturally. That's my goal, that's what I do. I try to learn with everybody that I can. I really search out and I pray that I can find people that have helped a lot of people and that's what I do. So I somehow find those people and then I go spend time with them. Any questions? Any more questions? Okay, well thank you for coming. It was nice to have you here. And if you want any paperwork or CDs, let us know and we can get those. One last you. question. Oh, yes. How do we get your teas? That was the question here too. Do they need to come to the center and they do they go to, to the yeah, healthy they, living store? Well, they need to come to the center and we'll have them more like pre-made, but if they come to the, the, even the healthy living store, they can ask me and I can make them because they're made fresh. Because if you think about it, if somebody like, I had a lady uh, two months ago, she had heavy metals and she had some kidney issues. So, and a lot of inflammation. So I made her a tea specifically for that. And then the next time we did the scan, it was all gone. Like her, there was no metals in her body and her kidney, her kidney, all of her blood work came out perfect. So I customized them. So whatever issue was going on with that person, I customized the tea for that issue. I might give you nine, 10, 11 herbs. Everyone's saying thank you and they loved it. Oh, great, so, great, great. Well, thank you for being here. It's so nice to talk to you all.